It's where the rainforest meets the reef, a tourism hotspot with no tourists. Forget cyclones and crocodiles, the biggest danger to this slice of North Queensland paradise is the only road in. When people come to the Daintree, it's iconic. So many people want to get out and adventure this country. Cape Trib's a pretty happening place when it is happening. We watched the cyclone um, from the bar. It was the flooding that came after it. We expect some disasters, but we also expect that people will be competent in their response to those disasters. What will happen to this town if they don't fix that road? If there's no solution quickly, there will be no more Cape Tribulation. Secluded and serene, Cape Tribulation is where the Daintree Rainforest meets the Great Barrier Reef, the only place on Earth where two World Heritage Sites come together. But for the last three months, the journey here has been near impossible. A paradise turned prison for the locals left behind. Oh, there's been a mass exodus. People just can't survive. Our community fabric is slowly unravelling. When Category 3 Cyclone Jasper tore through far north Queensland in December, it left flooded devastation in its wake. We were just watching the, the chest freezers and the barbecue float past um, as we yeah, evacuated. Homes and businesses were inundated and the flooding rain also triggered this. A massive landslide that swept the road into Cape Tribulation off a cliff. It has fallen before that particular slide but nowhere near the extent that it has. Since then, it's barely changed, and as we make our way north to investigate... There is no access permitted into Cape Tribulation, and the road into Cape Tribulation is closed. There's confusion from the get-go. Yeah, apparently they've opened it up again this morning. It's just all hearsay at this point, but that's what the locals are telling me. This ferry crossing, two hours' drive north of Cairns, is the gateway to the Daintree. And once you cross, the road only gets narrower. There's minor land slips every few kilometres. Some bad enough to warrant road closures. Workers here have told us it's open for two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. But locals say that's only when the workers are here and often, without warning, they're not. Lucky for us, they're eventually willing to let us through and from mountainside to creek bed, this is what's left of the road ahead. There's some serious damage. The hardest hit location is Noah Range, just minutes away from the Cape Tribulation Township. The scale of the landslide clear from the sky and the sea. So the work that's happening to this section of road is slow and intermittent and it dictates when and how locals are allowed to pass through. They've told us sometimes they can bring a four-wheel drive, other times they're made to walk. And once again, when there's no one here, there's no way through. Emotionally and financially, I think it'll be the end, end of the town for a lot of people shortly. Julian and Jackie own the local campground. It's usually filled with families in their caravans and tents. How does it make you guys feel to see it as empty as it is now? It's really hard for us to see it, see it with nobody here at all. Normally, even over the wet season, we've got a few people coming through. So, yeah, very hard to see it completely abandoned for so long. They'd just finished a major renovation the day before the cyclone hit and are now worried no one will get to enjoy it. This main street would normally be bustling with tourists, going out on reef safaris from here, perhaps heading to Cape York up the road, grabbing supplies from the shop or grabbing a drink at the pub around the corner. The children would usually be playing on that playground, but as you can see, there's barely a soul in sight. Forget the pub with no beer, these locals fared income fear they'll have to abandon the tourist town with no tourists if nothing's done. If we don't get a date for when the road reopens, we will shut our doors. We cannot stay open without tourists. Without a road, we have no business. It's the same for the Mason family who moved to the area in 1932. 
Anne, have you ever seen it like this before? Never, never been like this. You're part of a family, a founding family of this area. That must make you so proud. How does it make you feel to see it the way it is now? Well, it's a disaster, really. The family business is now run by Anne's son, Lawrence. He says he's staring down the barrel of financial ruin. We quite often have as many as 70 or 80 people booked for lunch and um, it's, you know, it makes me feel like crying sometimes to watch it like it is now. It's the first time in my 55 years alive that I've considered going that I may go broke. His daughter Amelia is also struggling, forced to stay with one of her teachers 60 kilometres away in Mossman where she goes to school. It just kind of feels like a punch in the guts when you feel like you can't come back home. Just this Monday I missed a exam because the road was closed. They're part of a group of locals now banding together, calling out the Douglas Shire Council for failing to manage the road repairs. They say not enough work was done after the cyclone when the weather was clear and now a 90-day permit allowing workers to push the soil into the ocean has lapsed so it has to be carried out by the truckload. We're just shaking our head at the sheer stupidity that's occurred sometimes. They should be opening the road mm. and telling us when it's closed. At the moment, yeah. they're closing the road and telling us when it's open. Jeremy and wife Merrin run Cape Trib Farm. Not only have their tourist cabins been left empty, they've also been unable to export exotic fruit from their orchard. How does it make the two of you feel watching a product that you're very proud of rot on the trees? Oh, it is so frustrating. So frustrating, he's now running for council himself, while former school teacher Merrin does all she can to help the town's students get to class. In the past five days of schooling, our two little year one students have managed to get to school for one day. We've had to fight every inch of the way We've had to boat them down in rough seas. I honestly didn't think that we would have to fight so hard to get our children to school. Even four-legged residents have been impacted. The horse rides at Cape Tribulation are a bucket list experience for tourists, but now these ex-race horses are having their food rationed. Brendan, how dire is the situation becoming? Uh, it's becoming very dire. We've come down to the wire quite a number of times now, um, in very close to running out of feed. It's heartbreaking for you to see that, isn't it? Very much. Um, you know, they're family for us. You know, we, we live with them all the time, um, work with them every day. They're like our kids, I suppose. We want them to visit. We're ready to go. We've cleaned up. We're waiting, but we have no road. Douglas Shire Council has told a current affair it's working toward opening the road. To all vehicles, residents and visitors during daylight hours within weeks. And... Council is committed to improving engagement and communications with residents and businesses impacted by this disaster. But residents say without an exact date, they've got no certainty heading into their peak season. We used to joke just after Christmas that um, Oh, at least we'll be open for Easter. Well, that's not looking like a reality now. But what's really frustrating about all this is they don't put us first. How much longer can you stand it like this? Not much longer. Yeah. No, I think yeah. we're at the end of our tether now. Yeah. We can't, can't really sustain it much longer. They are tough, hard-working people and they're at breaking point. The Douglas Shire Mayor, Michael Kerr, joins me. We appreciate your time, Mayor. Can you understand why the locals feel abandoned by you and your council? Well, I can certainly understand why they're frustrated and why they're angry at the situation because it's one that just can't be helped. You know, council has to act on what it's told for evidence from the geotechnical engineers as far as safety goes. Safety is the paramount situation and we are not going to put people's lives at risk. I think the locals understand the difficulties with this. They also don't want to see anyone's life put in danger. But they want answers and they don't feel they're getting any. So perhaps we can clear that up for them now. When will the road reopen? So the latest we've had from our geotech engineers is that they're hoping to uh, get that road open before Easter. So they can start taking tourist bookings for that weekend? That's correct. And we did have a community meeting up there last uh, Sunday and we did advise them of this information. OK, that doesn't seem to be the message that came from that community meeting. They felt they wanted a timeline, that they weren't given that and that you didn't even show. So the message that you're saying right now 
is that the road opens before Easter. Does it then stay open, even if it rains? From what we've been told, they're going to keep it open as best they can. If there's a massive fall, you know, if we get another rain event like what we had back in the 12th of uh, December, I can't promise that this road will stay open. Just seeing the damage up there, um, we're told there's often no one on site fixing the roads at the moment. If I'm perfectly honest, it's, it's very hard to believe that it is opening before Easter. You know, we have our staff or the engineers or the civil engineers we have doing the job up there as much as we possibly can. So is, it, is that a promise, so. I guess is what that I'm asking. Slide I guess is I'm moving. Is it that is it that definitive? Are you promising that road will be open by Easter and will stay open unless there is a, a massive rain event or something catastrophic happens? The advice that I was given the other day is that is exactly the case. But are you throwing the resources at it as fast as you can? This happened 91 days ago and for the majority of the time that our crew was up there, no one was even working on these roads. Last week you had school kids who couldn't get to school and on one occasion when they did, the roads closed with no warning and they couldn't get home to their families. 10,000 cubic metres of dirt falling down on someone, killing a child, knocking that bus off the range down a 70 metre cliff. That's not what I want. It's no, certainly no, not yeah, what but the look, people no, want no, either. No one we in must this town take wants precautions. That. No, one else, no one in town wants that either. But their issue is they feel mm. they've been forgotten. They feel that this has been incredibly slow and it's been mismanaged. And the fact that you're telling me now this will be open for Easter, why do I know this but the locals on the ground don't? Well, as I said, there was a public meeting the other day and this information was passed to them. OK, so they've got this wrong. But you weren't at that meeting, to be clear. Did, I th believe you sent your apologies. I did send my apologies. I had other commitments on because the meeting got changed because, unfortunately, the road was closed when it was supposed to happen because there was a, another major slide and rain on it. Do you think these people have been looked after enough? I mean, these are people, they don't whinge in the far north Queensland. They, they are self-sufficient, they pay their rates, yet there has never been town power, water or sewerage. They don't ask for much. They cleaned up the roads themselves after the cyclone and flood and they cleaned up some of the smaller landslips. And this is one of the very few times they've ever asked for help. And we have seen strong, tough people brought to tears. They're not alone. This whole shire is hurting. You know, we got damage like we've never seen before. We have got all the resources we can looking at this serious issue. So, according to you, everything is being thrown at this, all resources as fast as you can. Is that correct? That is correct. You know, we, we can't get lots of people on this slide. Because it was a dangerous site and it was moving, we were having to do it quite gently and and slowly, unfortunately. Look, I mean, I'm obviously far removed from this, right? I'm just trying to work out where is this disconnect where you're saying you're doing absolutely everything as fast as you can. You have the locals who feel like you are not jumping up and down. You are not making enough noise. You are not demanding the resources and money that's needed from a state and federal government. And their thought is, well, you know what? You're not running for mayor again. Have you checked out? Absolutely not. I promised this community I'd be here until the end of this term, and that's exactly what I've been. Uh, well, as I say, I'm not sure how the news didn't get through to the locals. Um, they do not have any understanding that it will be open by Easter, but I'm sure they're going to be very excited. Tourists will be able to come in and out of Cape Tribulation by Easter, correct? If everything goes to plan and we don't have another massive water landslide, that is what we want. OK, because look, I think you would know as mayor up there that this is a place that is so special to all Australians. It being closed Absolutely. to tourists also hurts Port Douglas, it hurts Cairns, all of far north Queensland. So I, I think yep. people need to know that this is being taken seriously and it will be fixed. You're absolutely correct. You know, Cape Tribulation is one of the jewels in this tourism crown up here. So would you encourage all Australians right now to jump online, book a holiday, Cape Tribulation this Easter? Get onto your booking site, book a flight to tropical far north Queensland, come up and enjoy everything we've got to offer up here. And if something goes wrong, the Mayor will personally provide that refund, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sally. <laughs> Thank you. We're holding you to that, by the way. Thanks, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We do mean that.